people think programming is about physiological adaptations. Yeah. They think it has to do with, am I trying to increase my strength, power, speed, agility, coordination, actually all those things, right? Am I trying to go to the CrossFit Games or stay at the nursing home? The programming has a lot more to do with just than just those factors. Yeah. It's going to set up the community of your gym because the way you program is going to lead into the way you run a class. The way you run a class is going to have the number one defining, it's the number one defining characteristic of your affiliate. It's going to give the most look and feel and brand of your affiliate has to do with the way you're running your class. Mm -hmm. Are your coaches leaders attentive and doing their job to the utmost, or are they just doing their job to get by? Are they checking boxes or educating, entertaining, inspiring? Huge difference, huge gap between those two. If you are trying to do too much, you can't educate, entertain, inspire. You can only chaos manage. There's going to be a whole lot of things that are outside of your control. Let them go. Let them go. Just focus on what is the best thing I can do. The best thing I can do to maximize my potential. My potential. My potential. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Today, I wanted to talk to you about um, community inside of CrossFit Affiliates. Obviously, a very important thing, something that a lot of people talk about, a lot of people think about certainly within the, within the community, within the affiliate community. Um, and it's something that you, you discuss a good amount, um, in your seminar. Mm -hmm. Um, so before we, but, it, but it's really sort of a, um, it's a tactile, tactile, um, sort of element to the seminar, but it's, but even more than that, it's really philosophical sort of like from the ground level up, how do I think about affiliate type of thing? Um, so today, maybe just, if you want to give us a little bit of context, um, on how you view the, the, the role of the community or the, the, the community within like the, the structure of running an affiliate and, and how a person should be thinking about that. Uh, well, I think it's no mystery that community is a huge aspect of what we're doing, right? It's, it, people see it as a differentiating factor between us and the global gyms, us and Barry's Bootcamp, us and Spin or Soul Cycle or Orange Theory, whatever. It's CrossFit at its heart is about that community aspect. Yeah, we're trying to improve human performance and change lives and push the nursing home away, but one of the huge factors why people come to us and why we love what we do is because the community we're involved in. Having said that, because you open up your doors does not necessarily mean you're gonna have a great community. Will you have it better than the global gym? Yes, I agree mm -hmm. upon that. But it doesn't mean it's gonna thrive the way it possibly could unless you take some necessary actionable steps to make it happen. The way I kind of briefed this before is that because you go to your kids' soccer games and because you go on vacation with your families and because you celebrate the holidays doesn't mean you have a great family. You're doing the bare necessities, but yet people think that because I'm having an open house, because I'm doing bring a friend days and because we have socials, we have a great community. And that's just not the case. There's a lot of things that we need to put in place or that we can put in place to make you thrive instead of just survive. Mm -hmm. And do you think that, I mean, it's impossible to know for sure, but do you, th do you get the sense that many affiliates are on that side of thinking that, okay, we do these three or four things and therefore we've got a good community and, there and therefore I can focus on X, Y, and Z? Or do you have a sense that people get how important it is and they're working on it, but maybe they're, they're not, either not doing the right things or they're, or they're kind of a bit hit or miss? I think we accept the surroundings which we're born into, right? I think that people are, are part of a gym and they're part of a community, so they think it's strong. And it is, but everything's relative, right? I, I just don't think people, it's the, we don't know what we don't know. And I believe that we have a strong community at CrossFit New England until I've seen gyms that have better ones. And uh, it's like, wow, it's really eye-opening. I think that people have a tendency to get in their closed doors and they think that they're doing everything they can and they're not. I know we're not doing everything we can. I know that there are better communities out there than what we have. You know, it pains me to say that, but it's just, the, it's the truth, right? It's, um, I think that people really believe that because they have a CrossFit gym and they have people hanging out in non-workout in times that it's a thriving community and they're not doing everything that they could be doing. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, do you, do you have an example or two of when you've been in another affiliate and you've seen something to, to sort of be like, Ooh, 
we don't do that at all or we don't do that that well? Like, do you have one or two examples or is it just sort of like a sense that you know you felt that before? Yeah, no, it's not necessarily at the affiliate. I feel like the affiliates I've traveled around to, I feel like I'm really proud of what we've created relative to those. Um, but in terms of, um, I've seen other affiliates that travel better than we do, that go to the games or go to regionals or do those other things better than we do. I don't know why yet, why we haven't been able to rally the troops like we, truthfully, the way we used to. When we were a smaller yeah. gym, yeah. we used to get the hundreds of people to come support us. I remember the, the red shirts. Yeah, and, it's, and I don't know if it's a, uh, it was a proximity thing. You waited regionals really close to us and now it's farther. The games are obviously across the country. But, um, closer now though. Yeah, that's right. And halfway across the country. <laughs> right. um, but there's- Five there's, or 10 more years, it'll probably be right Right, it's, make, it's slowly <laughs> making its way East Coast. I don't know, uh, it's one of those things, like I don't know what it is yet, um, yeah. but I know we haven't reached the pinnacle. Um, okay, so let's get into some of the things that I wanted to talk to you about and hear about was not so much the philosophical end of it, which is obviously super important and you can't skip it, but the the practical things, the tactical things that- um, an affiliate owner sort of listening now can can uh, implement in some degree pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've seen some of them over at CrossFit New England just having been over there. But th- things, for example, like um, thank you notes. Yep. Um, so maybe we can start there and we can kind of talk about the things that you found that work really well in terms of a, this is a thing that we do. This is a practical way that we show that we care about our community and how, and, and maybe how that's helped you grow uh, the community at large. Yeah. I think uh, a, a, a key point that you said there is um, I don't know if these things work well or not, but they're things that show we care. And that's truly what we're kind of looking for, right? Is just show a level we care because that's what people want to be a part of. If they feel important, if they feel cared for, that's what creates community, right? Community is all about trust and compassion. And um, I like this definition of uh, PJ Fleck, who's the head coach of Western uh, Michigan, who's turned the program around football. Turned the program around three years ago. They won two games. This year they went undefeated in their going to the bowl game. They're, it's an incredible story of this guy that one of his things is, he wants to create a family-like atmosphere, but he has people coming in from all these different areas and like family, right. f- some are orphans, some have one mom, one dad, it was some, some no parents, some have, you know, white picket fence and family means different to everybody. So he defines what family is and family is forget about me. I love you. Hmm. That's what it stands for. So he defines what love is and love because love means something to everybody different is me sacrificing myself for you. I'm going to do something for you that benefits me, doesn't benefit me at all. So that's what we're trying to do is this kind of baseline level is create this fitness family and this community. And one of the ways we can do that is by showing we care. And one of the ways we show we care is by simply writing thank you notes to our members. It's just as, simple, as simple as that is every week, every one of our coaches writes one or two thank you cards. Essentially, they're just saying like, thank you for being a part of my class. I really appreciate you and no like, Great job with the PR. No, like other reason than I appreciate you. Yeah, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. I appreciate you. Make you feel important. And they're handwritten and sent through the snail mail, the old school way. Because text message is really fast, but easy. Email is a little bit slower in terms of time of response and a little bit hard. The reason that a handwritten note is appreciated more is because people know it took more time and effort, the two things that are non-renewable resources. Right. The other thing we do, which is, it has nothing to do with our direct community, but it's a community at large, is when someone comes in to drop into a CFNE, the coach of that class writes them a thank you note and sends it back to their home address. So it's sitting there waiting for them when they come home saying, thank you for being a part of my 830 class. Really had enjoyed you here for Fran. You know, um, Hope you come back and anytime you're in town, please stop in again. To really? so another level, show we care. What kind of feedback have you received? Well, two questions. One, how long have you been doing that? And then two, what kind of feedback have you received from the members in terms of like how much they appreciate it? Do they sort of like what has been the result of 
the 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 thank you notes thus far yeah it's a, there's been no like overwhelming drastic change in anything right it's not like we went from 200 members to 400 members we started doing that <laughs> this isn't the secret it, pill it doesn't there's no <laughs> right exactly this is not the secret pill yeah. um the thing we've gotten is a you know um people come in the next day after they receive it and say what well, like wow thank you very much that was really nice that's what we're looking for that's all we yeah. want right that's yep. that's the reason we did it, is to make them feel important some people come in and they're like did you really write that or did you have somebody write that and you signed it? It's like, no, my handwriting is that bad. That's, I wrote it. So um, no overwhelming, like tip the needle type thing. It's not about that. It's truly about, can we just make them feel more appreciated? And we do other things too. If someone has a, a loss in the family or somebody um, is experiencing some sort of adversity, we send them like one of those edible arrangements. Yep. Another type of thing just to show we care. That's yeah. that's. It's the idea and I think that's the, the, one of the important things sort of embedded in that is the idea that you're building things for the long term and not for the short term. Like mm -hmm. there's no real short term benefit to your coaches or the affiliate for the time that they spend writing thank you notes. Right. Like you said, it's, it's you know, it's nobody's walking in bringing 15 people with them because they, right. they got sent. But it's little things looked at on the sort of the bigger scale that I think are probably the things that end up tipping the balance in the long haul anyways. Yeah, it's a great point. So in the short term, we might be looking at things like, can we do referral programs? Can we do bring a friend? Can we, um, you know, give discounts to people for things that are, we're going to look to move the needle in the short term? Yeah. In general, there's an inverse relationship between short term and long term. Yeah. Right. In general, not always. And it's not a hundred percent correlate, but in generality, if you have to have you know, you'll make sacrifices that you shouldn't be making if you have a short-term focus. Right. Um, one thing just to step back a little bit, because I really liked the I, the football coaches sort of, um, I, liked, I liked the defining of the terms because I think that that's really important. I think that that's, I mean, if anything, that's what CrossFit is based on. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, Absolutely. Great fitness. Let's actually define that. So I'm curious, have like when you say, you know, let's use the word caring because you've already sort of used it as, as sort of like a marker for what you want to do um, to, you know, you want to you want to show mm -hmm. the, the community care. Do you have like a definition in your head or is it even one that you talk to the coaches about about like, well, what does that really mean? Because caring can be that's kind of woo woo. That doesn't that's like that doesn't mean anything really. But like, do you do you know what it means? Like, do you can you spot it, you know, when you see it? The, what we talk about as a coaching staff is making people feel important. So there's this um, quote from, I think it's Mary Kay, who does like famous like makeup or jewelry yeah. or something yeah, like makeup. that. Makeup. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I don't, you, it's like I don't a know how you know scheme. Okay. It's my mother used to do it. Oh, so like, she used to sell it. So yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, anyway, super successful yeah. business Insane. all the rest. Yeah. Um, Oops. Oh, yes. the, the saying was behind that was, imagine everyone you meet has a sign around their neck that says, make me feel important. Mm. I really believe that's at the, at the heart of what human beings want. It's that. It's that level of connection. It's that level of acceptance. It's that level of recognition and feeling of importance. That's what they want. We try to do that by caring for people. You know, caring is, like you said, it's such a soft term and loose and vague and everyone's got a different definition. What we want is let's make people feel important. Does that mean use people's names? Does it mean talk to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis? Does it mean the thank you cards? Does it mean recognition for achievements? Does it recognition for showing up? Like that's what we try to bring into our level of at the base. And there's a lot more to it, but the baseline level, it's like make people feel important. And do you, how, how much have you found that that's a philosophy that you've had to work to make sure that your coaches and your staff understands, or do you look for people to come into CrossFit New England who sort of already have that at their core? You know, I know we've talked a little bit about how to hire coaches and what you look yep. for, but is that something that's like, okay, if, if you don't get that sense that they get that already, then they're, they're not the right fit or do they they come in and that's sort of something you've got to work with them on to understand, okay, I know that you like, you know, I know that you care, but here are the ways that we want to make sure that you're showing that. Both. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have that as an inherent personal trait that you have. If not, you're not the right fit for us. And then from there, let's continue to develop it through these, you know, 
to do's, yeah. these things that we can do every single day yeah. from using names to thank you cards and the other things that we do. We go a step farther and we lay that out to our members. So it's not just the people we're hiring, it's the members that we're taking in. We let them know this is an important characteristic of what we're looking for. We have certain, when, when you learn about target markets, right? This is what I've, when I originally heard about like your, your demographic, your tar- target market, who is the niche you're going for. My thought process was, well, like anybody that wants to get fit is somebody I want to have in my gym. And after a very, I was about to say a very short time, but it wasn't a short time. After, after a few years of kind of figuring this out, that's not the case. I don't want anybody that just wants to get fit. What I want is a certain person in my gym. And it has nothing to do with what I thought target market was. It's not demographics. Mm-hmm. It's not your sex. It's not your median income. It's not a radius around where you're coming from. It's not anything. It's not the socioeconomics. It's the personal traits. Right. What we're looking for are people that are positive, that you don't complain. Really, that's it's as much as that. And we've talked about that with like complaint-free yep. bracelets yep. and everything. Um, you know, we we're trying to create a complaint free environment. We're looking for people that are coachable so that they're open-minded, accepting of new ideas and wanting to get better, a learning environment. And the third one is that we're looking for is people that want to be a part of a community. If you want to come in here and do your weightlifting on the side and non CrossFit times, Mm -hmm. this is not the place for you. Yes, we have bumper plates. Yes, we have platforms and yes, no one's using them during those hours. This still isn't the place for you. And we've turned away people on several, several occasions because they don't want to be a part of the community. And it's interesting to me that back to the sort of on the coach's side that you hire people who have that inherent ability to to want to care. You hire for that. But then you also systematize it in such a way that you make sure that they're actually acting on it in a way that supports your sort of your philosophy on what you're trying to do with the community. And I think that the those two things are what makes it work so well. Because like, I could care and I could think that just being there and coaching and doing my best is my, that's what I do to care, to show you yeah. that I care, but that's not as much as you could be doing. It's like anything, it's that, you know, I've been, I've been reading Jocko's book, Extreme Ownership, so it's in my head, but it's a discipline. His voice is in your head, too. Di- yeah. <laughs> One of my direct subordinates. Yeah. I can start talking like Jocko. <laughs> um, is discipline equals freedom. Yep. So the more disciplined you are, so we have a thing with our coaches that they have to use every member's name in class three times. And we have it mandated at least the three times that it has to happen. It's not... It doesn't come across as forced or timed out or anything else. It comes across very natural, but everyone's got to hear their name three times because we know how important that makes people feel. Nobody wants to hear a word in the English language more than they want to hear their own name. Isn't that right, Patrick? Yes. Yeah, I see. So happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From there, if they have that simple system in place, well, then they know they don't have to worry about some other things. It creates this level of freedom and autonomy to coach the way they want to coach. Inside of that seemingly rigid structure is this amazing freedom to do all the other things they want to do. Now, if we didn't create that, they'd have a harder time buying, getting members to buy into them and trust them and all the other things. So what we're doing is we're creating this baseline prerequisites, mm-hmm. this baseline structure, systemization of how we can create some bond, connection, trust, and caring and then from there, now you have all this freedom in the world to do the other stuff. We don't need to say, Patrick, you need to warm up your clients doing this. We don't have to have briefs saying every single day, this is how it needs to go down. Because we're taking the bigger stuff, the more important stuff, layering that in, and all of a sudden the coaching stuff becomes a lot easier. Yeah. So you're giving them constraints to make sure that they stay within the bounds of what you want. And then you give them the, the sort of the creative freedom to to color inside those lines. Excellent, love it. You said it's so much more elegant. <laughs> Let's switch seats. Okay. Um, okay. So what else? So we've got we've got um, you know making sure we show that that your coaches and you care about them. Thank you notes stuff like that. What other sort of tactical? You know, if I'm an affiliate owner and it's Friday and I say okay, I'm, I want to do this on Monday. Like, what else could you implement on Monday? Um, yeah. So a community has to have people present, right? It's it's a, the number one thing. It's if, I don't care if you have 600 members, if your attendance rate 
is like a globo gym, which is in the you know single digits, you're not creating a strong community. It's much better to have 100 members and have an 80% attendance rate than it is to have the opposite. Yep. We do a few things to make to, to kind of encourage that. One is called the committed club. The committed club is if you come to CFNE 20 times in the month, we put your name on the committed club. And sometimes the committed club will, at the end of the month will have an award you get to pick from this these little prize bin or something like that. But even without that, it's a motivating driving factor for a lot of people. They just want the recognition. We put their names on the website. Here's our members of the committed club last month, all X number of members. And we usually have somewhere between around 20 and 40 members that make the committed club. Um, and we post how many times they came. So this person came 27 times. This person came 25, 24, 23. And here's all the people that came 20 times last month. And it becomes the goals of the month for a lot of members. The goal is I want to be part of the committed club next month. Yeah. It's something we've been doing for years and has not faltered, waved, or dripped a, the littlest bit in the, all those times. It's only gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. It's something I believe in is rewarding the people that are there. We call out people's names from the committee club in class the on the first or the second of the next month and reward them by either bringing them up and letting them pick out a prize bin or just a simple um, applause by the class on um, you know recognizing what they've accomplished. And I imagine that once you're on that list, you don't want to come off of it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, like it becomes sure. a, it becomes sort of self motivating. To, to most of the names stay pretty stay, consistent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's really cool to see the new names pop up as well. Um. Cool. Any anything else in terms of like a a tangible? Yeah. So what we'll um um what we'll do with our our members coming through the Elements program mm -hmm. is or the Elements Foundation on ramp, whatever you want to call that, is the last day. What we'll do is we'll bring them into the class that they want to attend, and the coach will bring them in, introduce them, and not like introduce here's gary his first day ever yay gary we'll do that you know welcome gary and then have gary do his own workout we'll have the coach stay with them and the coach coaches them through the workout so they feel even another sense of like hey we're bringing you underneath our wing we're protecting you we're here to hold your hand if needed along the way but there's nothing to be scared of and we care for you we want this to be a successful experience for you one of the other things we do in general is we try to make the early stages of learning, the early stages, as rewarding as possible, you know, as enjoyable as possible. I've talked about this before, but the early stages of learning and should not be about the points of performance. It should yeah. not be about improving movement. It should not be about getting healthier. It should be focused, those are a component of it, but the majority of the focus should be on enjoying the process. Yeah. You have a lifetime to get people to move better and get healthier. You have a very short window to let somebody see if they decide whether they are enjoying this or not. What um, what advice, because you have a pretty substantial sort of on-ramp um, elements program here, um, a little bit because you've got the, the freedom and flexibility to be able to have a coach and do it and all that stuff. Um, I know a lot of gyms don't have that freedom. So is there a version of that that, for the gyms that when your first class shows up, you're mm -hmm. just, it's your first class and you're in class with everybody else. Um, and that's just sort of like what they're able to do. Is there any way that you can imagine with that same, that same sort of idea of like showing that we care, showing that you're yeah. in, in a way showing that you're safe here and that it's okay that, you know, that we know that you don't know what you're doing, but we're going to take care of you. Like, is there a, are there any tangible ways that uh, an affiliate can sort of bring that idea in without, having like the extra coach or the, yep. the three weeks of on ramping there absolutely is and it's probably a not the answer people would expect it's what are you programming that what's your what's your system of programming what are your workouts of the day look like what most workouts of the day look like for most gyms is a strength biased program plus right yeah. they'll do three by five or three by three back squat and then they'll do maybe some skill work and then they'll do Helen, right? A new person coming in trying to work through all that and a coach trying to lead a class and assist a newbie is going to be lost right. at, at best, right? It, it, it's just not, it, it's, a, it's a system to set up to fail. What we do every single day is one thing. 
we do a workout. And then maybe we'll do, um, you know, maybe once every 10 days, we'll do a strength day. Right. When you have the less is more approach, we have just the workout. Well, now I know I have the, this amount of time to get the whole class on board with what we're doing, make sure it's crystal clear, make sure everybody's moving well. And we have this level of, again, discipline within the class that everyone's moving together. Everyone has the appropriate space around them. Everyone feels safe. Everyone knows exactly what's expected of them. It's again, that discipline is freedom from now from the member side. They are know exactly what they're supposed to be doing, when they're supposed to be doing it, how much time they have. And because of that, now I have the freedom to go spend a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time yeah. with this athlete. If I don't have that, if it's chaos, if it's okay, guys, we're going to do three by five back squats. And then when we're done with that, we're going to work on some, um, a, a little pull-up progression. And after that, we're going to do Helen. Okay. Everybody, let's go grab barbells and go. Yeah. It, it sounds like now I'll be able to go spend time with that athlete. You're not. That's not Because yeah, people are going to be lost. Yep. No one's going to know what's going on. How much time do we have to do this? Are we supposed to do this now or set up for the... If it's completely systemized and everyone knows all of the details and expectations from the beginning, you have the freedom to do a lot more yeah, within that hour. It's really interesting. I never really thought about, like obviously we've talked about how you guys program over there, but I've never thought about how you guys program in the context of how does it show that you care about them? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how does it show that you care about the members? Right. Because you kind of think program is sort of like the the meat and potatoes of the cro of CrossFit. And it makes sense for the way that you do it. And it makes sense for the for those reasons. But it also makes sense for the other ones, for the other reasons in that it. People think programming is about physiological adaptations. Yeah. They think it has to do with am I trying to increase my strength, power, speed, agility, coordination, actually all those things. Yep. Right. Am I trying to go to the CrossFit Games or stay at the nursing home? The programming has a lot more to do with just than just those factors. Yeah. It's going to set up the community of your gym. Because the way you program is gonna lead into the way you run a class. The way you run a class is gonna have the number one defining, it's the number one defining characteristic of your affiliate. It's gonna give the most look and feel and brand of your affiliate has to do with the way you're running your class. Mm -hmm. Are your coaches leaders, attentive, and doing their job to the utmost, or are they just doing their job to get by? Are they checking boxes or educating, entertaining, inspiring? Huge difference, huge right. gap between those two. If you are trying to do too much, you can't educate, entertain, inspire. You can only chaos manage. Right, right. And it's sort of that, that, that makes me think of um, one thing that anytime you post about it on on social media or anything, it kind of, it kind of starts a fight of some kind, but is, <laughs> but is the, your belief that coaches shouldn't be sitting down while they coach, they shouldn't be drinking coffee. They shouldn't be drinking protein shake. They shouldn't be checking their text messages, stuff like that. And those are all small, but again, small being really big things, small ways that you show you don't care as much. Right. And it's not that it's not, it's, it's not that somebody sitting down says, I don't care about you as much as it says, I don't care as much as if I didn't want, if I didn't sit down, you know what I mean? Yep. And I think that that's, Absolutely. I think that, that those are all really interesting ways that I've seen a hundred different ways and a hundred different affiliates, those little things that when you look at it with the context of like, is that the best thing that you could be doing right now? You see it, you see it all the time. You see it everywhere in, in a hundred different ways. Well, that's the overarching theme of pursuing excellence, yeah. right? It's not a matter of like, is this good or bad? It's, is this the best way we could be doing this? Mm -hmm. And if it's not, let's find out the best way and just push towards that as much as possible. Yeah. Obviously, like drinking coffee is not the worst thing in the world. But is it better than not drinking coffee? <laughs> right. Yes. For your members, it is. For you, it's not. I get that. Yep. Well, is you leaning against a post with your hood over your head because you're cold the best thing to do? Well, for you, it might be because you're tired and you're cold, but for your members, it's not. It shows disinterest and that you don't care as much. Yeah. You might care a ton. It doesn't matter. The perception is the reality of what it is. Right, right. And if you do that, if you look at that sort of all those small things under the the context of we're here to, to make sure that our members know that we care about them and then everything kind of makes sense after that. But if you don't have that sort of that North Star, then having a coffee at the 5 a.m. class like it's hard to know like is it terrible no right. is it great no but if unless you have that unless you've defined what 
caring is really in a way or whatever word it is that you've decided is the thing that your affiliate is going after. It's hard to know like that specific thing. Is that the right thing or not? After you brief the class about what the workout is, you go up to the whiteboard and you start writing something down. You write down, um, you know, whatever it is, tomorrow's workout, or you start writing something else down. Well, you've turned your back to the class. Is that something it's the, it's, it's showing to the class a level of disinterest, a level of not caring. You go over and talk to people at the front desk. You talk to your buddies at the front desk. Some of your best friend just walked in the door. So you go over, you give him a big bro hug, and you spend 20 seconds chatting with him. That is 20 seconds you're not going to get back. That's 20 seconds of making withdrawal from the class. Mm -hmm. Those are not the best things you should be doing at that time. You have to put the class and the individuals in the class above all else. Yeah. What would you recommend for an affiliate that doesn't have a front desk and somebody walks in? They're just maybe they're yeah. here early for their class and it's their first time. They don't know what they're doing. Like, because I've, I mean, it's it's hard to say you should ignore that person for forty five yeah. minutes. You know what I mean? Is there a so the, is there a, right. is there like a tactical? The, the options are you ignore that person. Yeah. You give all your attention to the class, <laughs> yep. which might be the right thing to do. The other option is you ignore the class. You give all the attention to this new person walking in, or the other one is you try and find some blend between the two. My approach is. It's going to be really awkward if you don't approach that guy. The class is actually going to be like, dude, there's a guy over there. Like, <laughs> right. You might want to go talk to him. Yeah. And similarly, if you just go over and talk to the guy for the whole time and ignore the class, the guy is going to be like, dude, you have a class going on. Yeah. The best thing to do in that scenario, if the guy's walking in, he's like, he's there to check out the class or he came in early or he's scheduled wrong. You don't know why he's there. Is to excuse yourself from the class and be like, guys, give me one minute. Walk over and talk to him and be like, Introduce yourself. I'm actually coaching a class right now. Can I, can you hang out for, if there's 40 minutes left in class, can you hang out for 40 minutes and I'll talk to you after that? If the guy says, yes, that's great. Good. Watch the class. If he says no, say he's going to understand. Right. It's going to be awkward for you. Don't ignore the class. Just give yourself, again, that discipline, which is going to give you more freedom. Give yourself the 60 seconds to go over and make the introduction and schedule something. Right. Because that tells him more about you and the gym putting first things first things. yeah exactly. I, my class is my priority yet yeah. i'm not going to ignore which you. which is what he wants to sign up for anyways if he's a absolutely uh, yeah, it so. would feel awkward either which way if you ignored him completely or you started to ignore the class either one of those scenarios become an awkward and a less than optimal experience the right approach to do that is give him the little bit of attention that he needs and then excuse yourself from him to take care of your class cool all right i think we leave it there absolutely great thank you